All righty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get developer tools set up. What this means is that in your computer, um, there's a whole bunch of things that go on under the hood that you have to kind of unlock as a developer. So the thing that we're going to do first is we're going to head over to the app store, which by the way, you're going to need your Apple ID for this. And you are going to install Xcode. So we're going to go look up Xcode and hey, this little thing with the hammer and the blue thing, that's what you want. I actually can't update it on this computer because there's reasons, uh, but you should be able to as long as it is your computer. So you should be able to click that update button and bam, it's done. Hallelujah. Uh, that is what you got to do there for Xcode. Then to actually get these developer tools installed, we're going to head over to this readme that I created for y'all. If you're accessing this link from the website, the student facing website, you should be able to just click on a, um, you should be able to just click on like um, the GitHub link and it'll take you there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use a tool called Spotlight Search to also move around. I access it by hitting Command and Space. And when I do that, I could search any application on my computer. For example, iTunes. Oh, iTunes is not called iTunes anymore. It's called Music. I can open up, uh, I don't know, Zoom. I can open up all these applications, but today we're gonna open Google Chrome. Awesome. So again, that's command and space. And then you just type in an application name. Awesome. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to go into this JRS computer setup and we're gonna find this little thing that says Xcode select install. Now, mind you, if you have not actually, I don't know why that popped up, that was strange. If you have not actually installed Xcode yet, please wait for Xcode to install before running this part. I will update the readme to make sure that it says that by the time you watch this video, but please make sure you have Xcode installed before you run this and you install it right from the app store. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to copy all of this, do, 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 which there we go, it is all copied. I'm gonna hit Command C. And we are going to now open up our terminal. That's what this little pink thing is. You could actually change the color of it if you want, but hey, why not pink? Am I right? Um, like before I said, I'm actually gonna take this thing and I'm going to make it full screen. Uh, and I'm also gonna make the text a little bit bigger by pressing Command Plus, just so that way y'all could read it. Um, and I am going to paste in the thing that I had. Now your terminal right now should look something like this. Um, that's because right now we are using bash. You're going to see that that's going to change when we switch over to Zish. That's totally fine. I don't know, think you're going to get this message there when you load yours up because I already have some stuff loaded up on my computer. Don't worry about that. You're doing totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this Xcode select in here. It's going to say checking for pseudo access. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my password here. And it installed some stuff, bam. And what this actually does is using our developer tools that we downloaded from Xcode, we're installing um, a tool called Homebrew. Homebrew is like another package installer. And you're gonna see what we're gonna do later on is we are going to brew install certain things. So for example, that's how we get Git on our computer. That's how we get Zish, GMP, GNUPG, SQLite. You don't have to really know too deep about how this stuff works. For now, if you're just following the commands, copying them over and pasting them and they run correctly, that's good enough for now. You don't have to fully understand this stuff, but I like to give an explanation while I'm talking over it because, hey, why not? So now that this is done, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video. And in the next video, what we're going to talk about is installing some packages using that homebrew thing that we just installed.